please welcome Bonnie Tompkins. Yeah, so I tweeted at Rebecca and I was like, oh, I might be in Scotland. I'd love to participate. She's like, oh, we'll make room for you. I was like, oh, okay, great, thanks. <laughs> so we're here. So Pallium Canada. Uh, in Canada, we have been talking about compassionate communities for quite some years now, but I would say it's probably only in the last two years that we've really, since the Charter, the Compassionate Cities Charter was released, that there's been a lot of movement. And um, so we're going to go through that today, sort of what's going on at the local levels, the landscape, but then as well uh, how I, in my role, am trying to help foster that across the country. So just a little bit of stats about Canada. You know, for me, always glaring is 70% of people want to die at home, but 70% are dying in the hospital. So again, I'm sure you guys have some statistics that are along that line, but it's, for me, it always makes me sit and go, there's a clear disconnect there. And while Canada has been working at the government level since about 1995 on palliative care, we're still only at about 16 to 30%. So, you know, we're 20 years later and we still have a long way to go. And in fact, I was sitting with a, a retired senator the other day and she made the point that there's still 70% on average that we need to figure out a way to help. And that's how we see the Compassionate Communities piece coming in. And the idea that for every one death, there's five people who are affected, right? And we were talking, a few of us earlier today, you know, it's also about the people who are left behind, right? After. Yay, so Pallium. So just a little bit about Pallium. Pallium has been around since 2001 and they are rooted in clinical education. So they create coursework because there wasn't clinical education within the medical system and the nursing system. So Pallium got involved and they started creating clinical education in 2001. And they did the train the trainer model where they would create the coursework with the community. So for instance, um, leap renal. So they would work with people who were in the renal field to build the clinical education. Then what they would do is they would train facilitators how to teach. And in fact, I took one of the courses because I just wanted to understand it. And that's literally what they teach you. They don't teach you the curriculum. They teach you how to teach, how to get people talking, um, how to encourage the conversations and things like that in the room. And so when we started talking about this community piece, it seemed it aligned quite well. The other thing, you know, when Pallium was always looking for their funding, with the government most often, they kept saying there, there's a need for something community-wise here, but because there was nothing really concrete at that time, that funding was never supported. So it was always sort of like, we'll fund you for the clinical courses, drop this piece. With LEAP coursework now, you know, it's about building capacity in the healthcare uh, field. So now what we're doing on the community side, it's the same principles. We're doing train the trainer, we're using their 20 years of experience on teaching people how to teach and uh, we're, we're taking it over to the community side. And so for Pallium, when the charter work came out, all of a sudden it was this aha moment of, okay, now we have something we can share, we can get a little traction, you know, and we can get some funding for it instead of the government's going, we'll fund the healthcare stuff, take that off your proposal, we're not going to fund that. So. I'm here because the government funded me and is funding this idea. So the national support, how we're hoping to do this and we're planning to do this is we want to create hubs. So Canada is very big and so, you know, we have had a few events where we try to bring people together, but that's not always realistic. It's expensive uh, for people to travel. So what we're doing is working at creating um, very open access conversation hubs that anybody can participate in, basically. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're hoping to do with that. We're looking at planting the seed in our clinical coursework. So what happens is, you know, in each module, we find a way to talk about compassionate communities. Well, doesn't this fall under? Or couldn't compassionate communities help with this piece? So now the, the future healthcare who are taking our courses are getting, I call it like socialized, you know, dropping that little seed in there for them to think about. 
And then the crux of what we're working on is toolkits. Uh, so I am a public health professional and I was a public health student when my partner died and all of a sudden it sort of made me think, why isn't public health involved in this? So I'm using the tools that I was taught to, uh, to spread it across Canada and these toolkits is a classic example of that, as well as other resources. So as things evolve, best practices, good tools, we will be sharing them with the communities, uh, especially in the conversation hubs. And we all, we are also feverishly looking to try and make that pan-Canadian evaluation. Because I know for me, I worked on the ground in two projects, evaluation was always the most stressful part, right? <laughs> and there's usually not a lot of funding and all that sort of stuff. So we're hoping we can help at least get it started and prop it up a little bit. So what is in our kits, just at a high level? So we use the knowledge to action. Uh, so we did research, we worked with you know, other compassionate community projects that had been going and we built these tools, tweaked them, piloted them. So our kit will come out in French and English. Those are our two sort of national languages to, to, to try and reduce that barrier. Um, they will come out at no cost, so there won't be a charge for them. The LEAP coursework does have a cost to it, but this will not. Uh, and really, the kit is based on every time somebody asks me a question, how do you do this? What would that look like? Do you have an example? So the kit, really the idea is, if I could have someone come to me and say, okay, so I'm thinking about doing compassionate communities, could you tell me a little more? How would I get started? I would literally just hand them this kit. So in that will be links to additional resources, right? Projects that are going on around the world, good examples, uh, articles, documents. How to, we have stakeholder engagement tools already built for them. So when they're going out to engage in the community, whether they're doing a town hall meeting or they're going to meet the mayor, they're going to be able to take something with them. They're not going to have to create it. Uh, marketing tips. So we have posters. Literally, they could just slap their logo on it, put a date on it, and use it. Right? Again, trying to make it easy. There's a full slide deck for them to present that talks about what's going on in Canada, the state of the medical system, and then how compassionate communities can help out with that. And it comes with all the speaking notes. You really don't have to, you know, put a whole lot of time into this. That was the idea. And then the next steps. So we created community engagement activities and discussion questions for them. So again, so they're, they're going to be able to just run a round table and not really have to um, think about what are we trying to achieve. And those questions, you know, they're looking at what are your current community assets, right? So really we're helping them build their asset map. We're asking at an individual level, what can you do? At an organizational level, what can you do? So by the time they finish that piece, uh, we, you know, we're encouraging them to do a town hall. That first meeting is over. They should have a pretty good understanding of what's going on in the community and, and where the interest is in the community. As well, we have a couple example videos in there. And that, so the two videos, one is, Again, people come to me constantly and they say, okay, so what would a town hall look like? So we recorded me doing a town hall and it's there. People can watch it at their own leisure if they want to, to just sort of help them feel more comfortable of what this may look like. Um, and another video that we've just included is the um, Honorable Sharon Carstairs, that retired senator I had mentioned. She headed up palliative care in 95, so she did a really great sort of guest speaker video that they could show if they want to around where we've come and how far we need to go. So just, you know, to give you guys a bit of a landscape of how compassionate communities are being built in Canada. And we, Alan and I, have had this conversation. We say compassionate communities because there are a lot of small villages, towns, who don't necessarily classify as a, a city. But we, so we tried to pick a word that everybody could see themselves in. So there are a lot of hospice-driven. In fact, the first two that I worked on were hospice-driven. There's volunteer driven. There are now two of them. They're really neat because they're actually not healthcare professionals at all. They're retired citizens. And some of them had really high profile jobs. So the neat pieces they bring with them is um, that skill set as well as a lot of connections. Like they are the gatekeepers. 
And then post-secondary driven, so I'll get into that, but uh, Brock University is picking it up and it's getting quite rooted there. Medically driven, that is being run by a bunch of palliative care physicians in the Toronto area who know that they're, they're sending their patients out into the communities or they're, or they're meeting them in the communities and still seeing so much more that is needed. Then we're definitely starting to have a bit more organization, so we're getting regional, you know, where a bunch of them are starting to band together and there's uh, someone overseeing that, as well as provincially driven, so where there's a provincial lead who's managing um, the initiatives as well. So just a little map of, you know, what's going on. I'm hoping once this kit releases at the end of the month, hopefully on Monday the 30th, that we will see the map start to populate itself a lot more. But right now, we have about 20 of them that are solidly rooted and going, um, and have been going, some of them, for two to three years. So I just thought I'd go through some of our current projects, because I know there's a lot of neat conversation around this already. So Brock University, it is run by public health students. So I had guest lectured um, when I was there and these students saw my lecture and saw the need and we started, you know, I started mentoring them through this and so now they're moving the Compassionate Brock forward and it's been really great. They've got great support by the academic um, and leadership, TAs all the way up to the deans and the president and things like that. So they've got some good rooted support there but then as well they've had um, meetings, you know, just general meetings with students and staff and faculty as well who see the need because when I listen to the stories, it's someone lost their mom while they were trying to work or it's a student who's caring for a dying grandparent or so that they're all being touched and they're all being touched in the places that are on the charter, right? So they're working now on their tangible next steps. I know that report just got finished last night as I get a picture from two students who are very tired. And then uh, they've already lined up their next student to, to move it forward. It was a first year student who lost her mother when she was in her teens. So she's very, very interested and passionate about moving that forward and she is also a public health student. So we'll all be working to mentor that. So the next is we're doing, Pallium is doing a big project with the uh, conference, Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops. I often rearrange that. So the idea being they approached us because they wanted to provide more palliative care education in their parishes. And so they originally came to Pallium to see if Pallium can help them, you know, with the clinical piece because that is what we do. And then I came along and then we thought, well, why don't we add compassionate communities in as well? Because if this, this tool that we're creating was to go into every parish in Canada, that's a lot of towns that are going to get socialized with um, the idea of compassionate communities. So we're feverishly working on that. We've started our focus group. So we're, you know, surveying them right up front to see what their understanding is of palliative care in Canada. We now have medical assistance in dying as of 2016. So there's a lot of confusion around that topic. Is it palliative care? Is it not? That sort of stuff. So we're, we're trying to survey and understand the knowledge around that. Um, and then there's the theological piece that they are working with. They're asking sort of the questions. And then uh, we're starting to see, is there an interest for parishes to get involved in a compassionate community, maybe lead one or what have you. And so there, there is a great interest. Our ultimate hope with how we're trying to build this, it will be sort of another toolkit again. And our ultimate hope would be that the medical and the community, they stand alone, those two pieces, they're standard. What would happen is we've already had the Jewish community come and say, we want to do the same thing. So our, our idea is if we design these independent of the theological, that then any other faith could pick it up and they could design their theological to meet those two pieces, right? To have those conversations and, and build that bridge. So there is a great interest to see what this becomes by other faith groups as well, because they would like to potentially uh, pick it up create their theological piece and spread it within their religion. So with my first toolkit rolling to a close, hopefully, knock on wood, 
The next one that we're looking at is workplaces because there's a great deal of interest in the workplaces at all levels. Um, the government is really starting to focus on it because caregiver burnout is a huge piece in Canada and so that will be the next one that we'll be looking to create and, and we're creating these kits to not for us to not go in the workplace, we're creating the kits so that the compassionate community, say in Burlington, can pick it up and they can use all of it, they can use a piece of it, they can add on to it, whatever they want to do. But what we want to do is reduce their barrier of having to create the basic stuff so they can get going quicker. Some of the things we're talking about are just classically, you know, policies, leave of absence, those sort of things. You would be surprised how um, much of it is not in the staff manuals. And so if we can get that basic knowledge into the workplace as well as maybe a little understanding of grief in the workplace, as Alan pointed out, three days bereavement after someone has passed, not necessarily ideal. So trying to help with that and help your fellow employee feel more comfortable to approach and talk to you, because I know that that's a common thing we hear. So for us, this is you know sort of that reorienting the environment. And that's it. I was told very clearly to stay on time. 